Hi friends, I'm Kim from Sweet Red Poppy. If you're new here, then welcome to my channel. Now, if you love all things sewing, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I share tips and tricks, I share tutorials, and even free sewing patterns. Today, I teamed up with Joanne's stores to show you how to make these adorable mommy and me aprons using Joanne customized fabrics. Today, I'm going to be sharing two sewing patterns with you that are free to help you get into the holiday spirit. I used the new customizer from Joanne to custom make these fun Christmas prints. Now it works in just three easy steps. You can upload or even choose your own design. Then you can customize the design by choosing the color, changing the scale, or even the repeat of the design. Finally, you can select the fabric base for your design to be printed on from over 20 different options. Now, are you ready to get sewing? Let's jump right into this project. You can find all of the supplies for this project from your local Joanne store or even online at joanne.com. Here are the supplies that you will need for this tutorial. A printed pattern, tape, a rotary cutter, a rotary mat, one yard of fabric, pins, a sewing machine, thread, an iron, an ironing board, fabric marker, hem gauge, and an acrylic ruler. Begin by printing off the PDF sewing pattern that's linked in the description below this video. You'll want to start by printing off page one of the pattern. Now to do this, you'll want to download the pattern to your computer and then open the file as a PDF. It's really important that you don't open the file in an internet browser as this can change the scaling of my patterns. My pattern should be printed off at 100% with no scaling. The first page of the pattern has a test square that you can see here. You'll want to measure this test square to make sure it's accurate before you print off the rest of the pattern. What this is going to do is save you ink and time and paper just in case your printer settings need to be adjusted. Now once you have the entire pattern printed out, you can go ahead and assemble your pattern together. My PDF patterns feature multiple guides for assembly, so each page has this black line around the outside of the pattern as well as these pink stars. What you'll want to do is align the lines on each page as well as the stars and then tape the papers together. Now, if you want, you can trim off the excess, this white right here, or you can simply just line these up. You can kind of see through the paper and make sure that they're lining up. If you need, you can use a light box to help you assemble these a little bit easier. You will notice that each page is numbered and that's going to help you assemble everything in order. If you need extra help, refer to the assembly chart for how the pattern pieces together. Go ahead and tape or glue your entire pattern together. Now it's time to cut the pattern out. I like to use a rotary cutter with a rotary blade that's just for cutting paper as this can dull your blade. You'll want to follow the lines and cut out all of your pieces. Now you should have a main apron, a pocket, waistband, neckband, and a facing. Next, I am going to fold my fabric in half and I am aligning my selvage edges together. Once you have that done, you can lay out your pattern pieces and I'm going to align my fold markings with the fold of my fabric. Go ahead and pin your pattern into place. Next, you'll want to lay out your waistband, your neckband, your facing, and your pocket. Now, just a reminder that the facing and the pocket should be aligned with the fold as well. Once you have everything pinned in place, go ahead and cut it out. Going to cut out my facing. And now I'm moving on to my pocket and you do need to cut out two of these on the fold. So cut it out the first time and then move it over. Just gonna line it up with that fold and cut it out again. Now I'm moving on to my neckbands and waistbands, and I always like to use 
this acrylic ruler just to help me get straight cuts. And whenever I can, I always butt these up just right next to each other because that saves me on a cut. Now, before you go ahead and remove your pattern pieces from your fabric, we do have a few markings that we need to transfer. So we have our neckband placement as well as our waistband placement. So go ahead and mark those. This is going to help us align the waistband and neckband in a later step. So I'm just using my fabric marker and I'm gonna mark on the inside of my fabric since this is a pretty dark print. I'm also going to mark my pocket placement. This is just so that I have an easier time aligning everything. Now let's go ahead and work on preparing all of our fabric pieces before we start sewing. You're going to want to plug in your iron and fill it up with water and make sure that you have your steam turned on. Next, you will want to fold the sides and the bottom of the apron. So first I'm going to fold it in 1 fourth inch and then I'm going to fold it in one half inch, and this is going to be turned to the wrong side of the fabric. I like to really go over these hems and just steam as much as I can. That's going to set your hem in place. And then go ahead and either pin or clip your hems in place. I'm going to set my apron aside for now. Next up, grab your waistband and your neckband pieces. And I'm going to be pressing these in half. And what this does is it just helps me to have a nice center line when I go to turn them. So use plenty of steam again, and I'm just lining up those raw edges. Now repeat this process with the remaining neckbands and waistband. Once you've done that, I'm going to open this up. You can place it right side facing upward. And then I'm going to fold it in half with right sides together. This is to prepare it for sewing. Go ahead and pin your raw edges together. Once you have everything pinned together, it's time to start sewing. So I grabbed my sewing machine. I'm going to place my waistband underneath my foot, just raising it up and I'm raising my needle as well. And I'm going to be aligning my raw edge with the edge of my foot. 
So I'm just using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And you're going to sew down this short side. Make sure that you back stitch as you begin. That's going to lock your stitch in place. And then once you get about 3 8 of an inch from the raw edge, put your needle in the down position, lift your foot, pivot, and then lower your foot. And you can keep sewing. And you're going to sew the entire length of this strap. Don't forget to remove your pins as you sew. I like to just check along this raw edge, make sure everything's lining up. want to sew all the way to the edge and then back stitch to lock your stitch in place. Go ahead and cut your threads and repeat this with your remaining three straps. It's now time to turn both of our waistbands and our neckbands right side out. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. What I'm going to do is just trim down my seam allowance right here in my corner. What this is going to do is it removes some of the bulk that happens when you turn it right side out, and that's going to give us a sharper corner. So I'm going to snip off this corner. I'm cutting close to, but not through my stitching. That's really important. You just wanna cut close to it, and you can trim down this as well. This just gets rid of all the bulkiness. That way, when we turn it right side out, we can get a nice sharp corner. What I'm going to do next is I'm just going to use my fabric marker to help me turn this right side out. So I just start turning this right side out by pushing this end inside. Once I have it started, I will use my marker just to push it inside more. And I'm using a pretty thick canvas, so this is a little bit trickier. If you're using cotton, it should be pretty easy and then just push this. And you wanna keep pushing until you reach that opening. Till I make it through the opening. So you can see my pen is still inside of here and that's okay. I will let it fall out here in a minute. While it's in there, I am going to work a little bit on this corner, just pushing out all of that material. And then I'm just going to release that pen. Now at this point, your waistband and your neckbands are probably looking a little bit rough because they just got turned. So I am going to give this a good press. Now when I do this, I make sure that my seam is turned all the way up because I'm going to be using a lot of seam and a lot of heat. And what I do is I roll this seam back and forth between my two fingers. And I'm trying to get all the way to the stitching line. Now you can see that this is fully turned once I can see my stitches. Taking the extra time to really turn this seam out is going to give you a really even looking band and it really takes your project from looking homemade to looking like it was professionally made. Now my waistband is looking pretty good, but my corner is looking a little bit rough. So I'm going to show you a trick to get a really nice sharp corner. What you wanna do is take a needle and thread it. So I'm just going to take some thread from my sewing machine. I'm going to insert the tip of my needle into my corner. and pull the thread through it. Now with this thread, I'm just going to gently pull 
this corner out. See how we're already getting some more shape to this? It's already starting to get a little bit pointier. So I'm just gently pulling on this and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. And this just helps to release the corner. Sometimes it can kind of just get a little bit stuck. So do the same thing over here. And you can see we have a much nicer, straighter line now. So I'm going to go ahead and press that. And repeat the same process with all of your waistbands and neckbands. Let's go ahead and move on to our pocket. So lay both of your pocket pieces out in front of you. And I'm going to place one of them right side up. And then I'm going to place the other one on top of it. So you should have right sides together. And then what you want to do is pin them together. We're going to be sewing around the entire rectangle, leaving about a three to five inch opening along the bottom. I just put a pin straight along the area where I want to leave an opening, just as a reminder. So I'm going to start right after that opening. And again, I'm lining up my raw edge with the edge of my sewing foot. And I'm just going to sew around this rectangle. When I'm about 3 eighths of an inch from the edge of my fabric, I'm going to put my needle in the down position, lift my foot, pivot, and keep sewing. Now I'm going to clip all of the corners of my pocket. So just like we did with our waistbands, I'm clipping close to, but not through my stitching. And this is just going to reduce the bulk when I turn this right side out. And something that I like to do, this is just a personal preference, is right here along my opening that I didn't sew, I like to just press up. So you see, I have my stitching line here. I can press against my stitching line and create a fold in my fabric. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to figure out where that fold should be when you turn it right side out. So I'm going to do that now. And that's just gonna help me later on. Okay, so go ahead and turn this right side out. And you can use your fabric marker or even a turning tool to help push those corners out. And you can see here where we just finger press this and it makes it line up so much nicer. I am going to take a minute just to pull my corners out using that same method that we used earlier. So this pocket is going to be front and center, so I really want my corners to look good. Bring your pocket over to your ironing board and go ahead and iron all of your seams. I'm just rolling these seams all the way out and using plenty of steam.
Okay, I am moving on to my main apron. So I've laid this out in front of me. I'm looking for my markings that I made earlier and I'm going to align my pocket into place. And you do wanna make sure that your opening is here along the bottom, not the top. Place a few pins around your pocket and then we're going to be sewing about one eighth of an inch from the edge. And we're going to sew along this side, across the bottom and up this side. And then if you want at the end, you can sew a line straight down the center and that's going to divide it into two separate pockets. So I'm going to start just about half of an inch before my pocket starts. And then back stitch right on top of the pocket and keep sewing. Now as you come to the corner, put your needle in the down position. Lift your presser foot and pivot. And then you can keep sewing. And sew up this last side. Going to back stitch right here and cut my threads. And if you want, you can add a center seam here. Make sure to back stitch. And if this fabric is hard, you can just roll this up. This can be a little bit of a tricky spot. Make sure to back stitch here at the end and then cut your threads. Take a minute just to trim away any of your excess threads so this looks nice and neat. Now let's move on to the apron facing. I'm going to grab my apron facing and turn the bottom up towards the wrong side, three fourths of an inch. Go ahead and press that in place. And I'm only turning this under one time because this raw edge will get sewn down in a later step. Okay, it's time to move back to our apron. Grab your neckband pieces. And we're going to be lining them up. So I'm going to place my neckbands in place and you can see I have my marking right here. So I'm just lining up my neckband and really it should just be lining up with this corner, with this fold. Go ahead and pin that in place. Now I'm going to open up these folds and align my facing. So these raw edges should be together and it should be right sides facing. Do this on both sides. And place a few pins in the middle as well. I'm going to flip this over and sew it from the back side. Now you want to make sure that your facing is still folded and that these edges are aligned. And this is a little bit tricky. So make sure that you're sewing in the innermost fold. And that's the reason I'm sewing from the back so that I can see that fold. So you have your first fold and then you have your second fold. Make sure you're lined up with the second fold. Once you get to the top, you can return to that 3 8 inch seam allowance. And 
Now, if you want, you can backstitch across this entire strap just to give it a little bit more security. I like to secure any seam where I know there's going to be extra pressure. Okay, so right as I near this fold, I'm going to put my needle in the down position and pivot and follow that as my seam allowance. Make sure that you're not catching your strap in this seam. And backstitch and cut your threads. So just like we did earlier, I'm going to trim down these bulky corners. And then I'm going to turn this right side out. So if you just pull on those straps, that will help everything to start turning. And let's give this seam a good press. I'm going to move on to my waistband straps and we're going to be sewing them to the back of the apron which will look a little bit funny right now but they will get turned in a later step so I have my markings over here I'm just going to line this up I'm just sticking this raw edge into this little fold you want to make sure to really pin this in place because this is going to be a fairly thick seam Now it's time to sew everything together. So I'm going to start at the bottom of my facing. I'm going to sew across here and then down along this fold. And then I'm going to be sewing my sides in place, my hem, and then back up and around. Now it's easiest to sew this from the back side. If you're a more advanced seamstress, you can sew it from the front. I'm gonna go ahead and sew it from the front just because I think it looks better that way. If you are sewing from the front, you can feel where your fold is and you want to make sure that you're catching that in your stitching line. You can see how I can feel my fold right here with my fingernail. I'm just keeping that consistent. Now as I'm coming closer to the edge, I can look under here and I can see I need to be close to this fold. I can feel that right here. So I'm just going to pivot, needle down, pivot, and then sew along the rest of your apron. And you can check from the back side just to make sure that you're catching everything. As you come up to your waistband strap, just make sure that it's straight. And we're going to be pivoting again at this corner. my waistband strap and then you can just keep sewing down the length of this apron and you can always check and make sure that you've caught everything Okay, 
pivot when you reach the corner and sew across the hem of the apron. Okay, once you reach the beginning of your stitching, you can just go right back over it and back stitch. Okay, this is the very last step and then we are finished. So what I'm going to do is fold my waistband straps over. So fold your waistband strap out away from the apron and you can pin it in place. Repeat this on the other side as well. Okay, let's go ahead and sew this in place. I'm just going to be sewing a little rectangle around this strap just to secure it in place. needle in the down position and pivot pivot again you can sew down this original stitching line and I'm going to pivot one more time I'm going to push all of this apron through <laughs> and finish this little rectangle and make sure to back stitch Now go ahead and repeat this on the opposite side as well. Now you can press your entire apron with plenty of steam and you are finished. I cannot wait to see the aprons that you create with this pattern. Be sure to share them on social media with me. You can find me on Instagram or on Facebook at Sweet Red Poppy. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and give this video a like and make sure that you come back next week for another sewing video.